They call this chocolate country. On each side of the road are cocoa plantations. But take a closer look and you see this. Cocoa farmers destroying their farmland. After digging these holes, Godin surveys the ground in search of gold. Barely visible, so little, yet worth so much. And so he digs some more, hoping to find even more gold. It's addictive and it's devastating the forest. I want to buy a nice house, get married and have a nice car. All of these dreams I can make happen. It's all right here in the ground. They use mercury to extract the gold. The toxic chemical is poisoning them and polluting the ground. Yet the owner of the land says he doesn't mind. His cocoa plantation isn't producing like it used to. There is not enough rain. The seasons have completely changed. Harvesting is just too difficult. It's not worth it for me. The price of gold continues to rise on the global market. Foreign buyers come directly to villagers to buy the precious metal. And this harvesting season has been an exceptionally bad one for the world's biggest producer of cocoa. This is an orchard that farmers want to tear down to dig for gold. They say that farming for cocoa is labor intensive. It involves picking tons of these cocoa pods, splitting them open, drawing out the seeds for a month, and then selling them to the state for just $2 a kilo. The state then sells it to foreign multinationals. Axel Emmanuel makes high-end Ivorian chocolate. He says that this is where the money is. And that other cocoa growers should become chocolate makers themselves, saving their plantations and making a better profit. Farmers here only know how to pick, to dry and to sell their cocoa. They don't know how to do anything else with it. We want to help them learn to transform it so they can earn 10 times as much. The world's appetite for chocolate continues to grow. The market is estimated to be worth more than $130 billion by 2019. But for now, cocoa farmers are hungry for gold. Nicholas Hawk, Al Jazeera, Bure, Ivory Coast.